I live in the southwest of England and I love going for walks whilst keeping my eyes on the verges and the edges of paths looking for wildflowers. I then find that dropping down to their level and delving that bit deeper into their displays a really mindful activity that leaves me feeling accomplished and refreshed. So today we're going looking for five early spring wildflowers that you might be able to find around and about your home. Let's go see what we can spot. Here in the UK, we have thousands of species of wildflower which grow across all landscapes, from mountains, moorlands and forest floors to coastal cliffs, urban sites and open grassland. They come in all shapes, sizes and colours, and getting to know the wildflowers in your local patch can be a truly wonderful way to feel more connected with the land around you. First up, we've got the snowdrop. As one of the earliest flowering plants in spring, they're always a welcome sight. Growing in clumps, they flower from January through to March and can be identified by the smooth, slim leaves and nodding white bell-shaped flower. You can usually find snowdrops in areas with damp soil and although formerly considered as a native species, snowdrops are actually a relatively recent arrival to the UK, first recorded in the wild here in 1778. Interestingly, they were traditionally used to treat headaches and as a painkiller, but in modern medicine, a compound in the bulb of the snowdrop has been used to develop a dementia treatment. That being said, snowdrops and their bulbs are poisonous to humans and can cause nausea, diarrhoea and vomiting if eaten, so we definitely wouldn't recommend that. Daffodils are considered as one of the heralds of spring and usually flower between March and April. Our native daffodils, also known as the Lent or Easter lily, are smaller than most garden varieties, with paler petals and a deep yellow trumpet-like tube, whilst the leaves are grey-green, thin, long and flattened. Often they grow in groups, painting a striking splash of colour wherever they grow, such as damp woodlands, fields, grasslands or orchards. Currently, pharmacists are exploring the use of daffodil bulbs for treatment of Alzheimer's disease, so we'll see where that goes in the future. Despite not actually being part of the rose family, the Latin name for primrose means first rose of the year, and sure enough, seeing a primrose whilst out and about is one of the best ways to tell that spring is on its way, with them flowering between February and May. These low-lying, compact little plants are formed of a rosette of leaves, which are pale green and hairless on the top, and grey-green and hairy below, whilst the flowers have creamy yellow petals which are darker towards the centre. The best place to find primroses is in cool, damp, shaded locations such as forests, north-facing hedgerows and banks, mountains and cliffs. Other names for primroses are Golden Stars or Darling of April, and they just so happen to be the county flower of Devon. Celandines have yellow star-like flowers and are one of the first to emerge at the beginning of the year, flowering from January through to April. They offer a generous splash of colour, signalling the steady change from winter through to spring. Their flowers usually have between 8 and 12 glossy yellow petals, and their dark green heart-shaped leaves are glossy as well. They offer an important nectar source for insects emerging from hibernation, such as the queen bumblebee, and they're also high in vitamin C, which for us humans, historically, helped us to prevent scurvy. If you see a violet in the wild, it's probably a common dog violet, which are widespread and live happily in many different habitats, including woodland, grassland, heathland, hedgerows and old pastures. Their pansy-like purple-blue flowers appear from March until June, with heart-shaped leaves in a basal rosette. Their flowers are scentless, unlike that of their cousin, the sweet violet. These guys are the only fragrant violet native to the UK, and are best identified by the sepals on the back of their flower, which are blunted contrary to the common dogs, which are pointed. Violets are really important for several fritillary butterflies, which lay their eggs on them, including the small pearl-bordered, the pearl-bordered, and the silver-washed fritillary butterflies. So there you have it, five early spring wildflowers to get stuck into finding around and about your home. Let us know how you get on in the comments below. We would love to hear from you.